Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And uh, we are going to be doing a lottery simulation today and a one-take reaction to all the games for the ninth, just like I always do. We only do one take, no editing, none of that stuff. No, straight out, right off the top of my head. Boom! We do it all the time. Sub up so you can be part of this fine frolic. I do trade videos, free agency videos. I have the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show that I go on every once in a while. I do live streams, everything. Be part of it. It's fun, man. That's why we're here, right? Hockey is supposed to be fun. So if you're easily offended, which you probably don't know you are, how about if you get offended at all? It's probably not the place for you. All right, let's go to the uh, lottery, because the lottery is tonight, don't you know? Yeah, did you know that? The 10th. All right, so we're going to do a mock draft simulation. Go over it real quick with my, uh, what I do know about each player. Here we go, let's hit her. Philly! Oh my gosh, my team wins the freaking lottery. One of my teams. I'm an Edmonton Oilers, Philadelphia Flyers, and Carolina Hurricane fan, hence with the Hartford hat, right? Uh, yeah, so Philadelphia would definitely take Shane Wright. They need another big defenseman. Shane Wright started off a little soft this year, but uh, it was, you know, with COVID and everything. Started rocking later in the season. Looks like he's going to be a good one. At least a top second line center, probably a number one. Philly sure needs a guy like that. Big center to help out Couturier there. Nice pickup by the Philadelphia Flyers. Chicago, I it says Slavkovsky here, and I would go with Slavkovsky too. He looks like he could be a Rantanen or something of that nature. And uh, Chicago needs help everywhere. And they certainly need some bigger players. They have uh, they have some smaller wingers there like Debrinkat and uh they're not coming off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. But Jabrinkat, <laughs> Kane, gosh, smaller wingers. They could use some size for sure. Um, little, They could use some size up the middle too with Doc and everything. They could use help everywhere. This would be enormous for them to get the second pick. So we got Chicago getting the second pick. It's funny. They changed this around. I did my uh, draft thing and it was different than what they had before now it's like they were listening to me because some uh Nemich for the Montreal Canadiens is exactly what I would take in this spot almost like a Slavin type guy Montreal could definitely use help everywhere and if you're going to rebuild which Montreal seems to be that they're doing starting in the back end is probably not a bad idea so Yes, I would take Nimitz here. Here's the one. Now, Logan Cooley. Logan Cooley, from everything I've read about him, and this would be Arizona's pick, is sort of like um, a Dano from now playing in L.A. And I don't know if I want to take a guy with a little less limited offense in this spot, but he's such a two-way good player. It'll be in the two -way, a good two-way player. Two-way good player? good two-way player that it's possible that they take him here but honestly I think they got David Juracek too low I'm taking Juracek I'm taking the big six foot three D-man here he's mobile um, needs to work on his offense a little bit but even if it totally doesn't come I mean big six foot three guys that can skate like that and play like he can are hard to find I have a feeling that's what Arizona will do there now Seattle um, would then, I think, take Logan Cooley because Ron Francis loves those kind of guys. He will take strong defensive centers every single time. I think Logan Cooley would go to Seattle and uh, to help out the Nears there, that would, that would solidify their top two. Uh, great place to start building as well up the middle. We see it in the playoffs now. Teams that are strong up the middle have a better chance. You always want to be strong up your middle, don't you? Never want to be weak in the middle. All right. And uh, so I'll, I'll do a couple more here then. That would be uh, New Jersey would 
possibly take Joaquin Kemmel, who's a first shot kind of guy. It's a lot of talk there that they need. They want first shot shooters. So, and that would bring Savoy down to uh, Ottawa, who needs a center. Looks like he's going to be a second line center type guy, and I think they nailed them there. After that, I think it can go all over there. Brad Lambert seems pretty low. I think somebody's going to take a flyer on him up there. New Jersey might hit him as well. Tell me what you guys think. What do you? Who do you want your team, if this were to happen like this, who do you want your team to take, or do you have any idea at all? Let me know down there in the comment section. What does your team need? All of those sort of things like that. All right, let's get to my reactions now to the games. Panthers versus Capitals. This game blew my mind, honestly, in the sense that it was so freaking boring. Who thought this was going to be a boring matchup between the Panthers and Capitals? I had I had I had a high-scoring series all day here. Uh, the Capitals are playing the trap, and honestly, the Panthers figured it out this game. Thirty-two shots to sixteen. You, you can't only get. I know Bob Roski is not the great finest goaltender in the land out there, but you got to find a way to get more than sixteen shots in a whole game against them. Uh, the Panthers just looked like they were playing kind of a chess game. And I guess that's what they got to do if the Capitals are going to play this way. Um, and they won the chess game. They got it 3-2. They finally potted a couple. Uh, Carter Verhage with a huge night. Remember when I was doing this, and I know you were all listening, because why wouldn't you have been? Maybe you were you lost under a rock or something. But um, – I said, watch out for Carter Verhage, and I also said, watch out. And this kind of surprised me, is surprising me with Florida. And I would like Florida fans for you to talk about this. Is I don't Sam Bennett was another guy. I guess he did have a good game. You know, the, I, you know, I didn't really notice him, but he had five hits, six shots on goal. Why did I not notice him in that game? Anyways, I thought those were going to be huge guys for them. Uh, looks like they were huge for, for them in this game. And uh, we'll see what happens going moving forward. But they needed, needed, needed that game. Tied it up. You know, now, uh, now they go back to Florida and uh, try their hand at home. I think they're going to win it. I think they're going to pull it out. But, man, it's a lot harder than I thought they were. it was going to be, for sure. A veteran team, though, and that's the thing. Uh, and next year, I promise, I promise, 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 I'm going with the veteran team every year, every time. Veteran teams that have playoff experience, regardless of who may be out of the lineup and all of that, have a tendency to win game, win series in the uh, in the playoffs. It's just the way it is. Um, Sherrod, you notice Sherrod only played 16 minutes here. I do you remember when I said I bet you his minutes drop uh, in, in as he gets into the playoffs? He's very overrated. He's a very overrated player. Ekblad, Forsling, Weir, these are the guys that should have been getting it. That's why I love this coach. Burnett, he I think he identifies his talent very, very well there. As far as Washington is concerned, um they don't want. They showed me in this game they don't want to run and gun with Florida, which I get. But can they win a defensive battle like this, uh, playing sort of a trap type game against Florida? Maybe it's the only chance they have. But I don't like their chances if that's the case, and that's the reason why I didn't take Washington to win this series. I just figured that the only way they were going to beat Florida was play the way they did last night. And there wasn't a very good chance that they were going to beat Florida playing that way. Um, kudos to Sam Sonoff. Uh, he's played probably better than he's played all year. That's encouraging, I suppose. But going into the next uh, going into the next game, I'm going to be interested to see if they keep that same defensive, slow plotting philosophy because that's what it seemed like the Capitals tried to do. They tried to slow down the game as much as they possibly could and uh, to take the speed away from the Panthers. And I suppose that's the only way to do it, but I don't think it's going to do it. They're going back to Florida now. 
Florida has the advantage. Uh, they both stole one in, in at home, in each other's barns. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where they go from there. Tell me, sub up. Tell me what you think, Washington Capitals fans. Do you think they're doing the right thing playing that way? Panthers fans, how do they? Do you think they should open it up a little bit more against? Uh, Washington. I mean, Washington is doing that type of game where you're just waiting for mistakes. So I'm I'm going to be leaning under here from now on. I uh, no more overs for me. All right, Penguins versus the Rangers. And uh, man, oh man, talk about what I just said with uh, experienced teams. Uh, they have their third. They have a third string goaltender in. And uh, so what do they do? They play a high possession offensive game. They put New York Rangers back on their heels. The gamble, if you want to call it, is this is a very young defense. Pressure them hard. They're talented as heck. No doubt about that. But if you can get on them in the offensive zone as much as you possibly can, they're going to cough up the puck. And that's pretty much what they did. Uh, and then, you know, all the talk in the land here about this game, really. Uh, great for Gunsel. I mean, Gunsel, what a beast in the playoffs. Has, he's incredible. Like, he just can't stop scoring. And uh, that was a plan, and New York Rangers don't have an answer for the plan. And another thing they don't have an answer for is the Crosby line. They can't seem to do anything against that line. Um, by the way, Mr. Zabanajad. Are you out? Are you there? I mean, this is your big moment here. I, I, if I'm a Rangers fan, I'm really getting concerned because Zabanajad does not seem like a playoff performer at all. I would say, I would actually say Strom is having a better year than, than uh, Zabanajad this year. And Strom is the one that they're thinking about not signing. Uh, Three to one, they're down now, Rangers fans. I'm sure you're not feeling all that confident with the uh, with the abilities of this young team. I think they're going to be fine. Not in this series. I would have to think that Pittsburgh is definitely going to take this series. You had a juicy opportunity, as far as I'm concerned, to beat the Pittsburgh Penguins with their third string goaltender, and uh, they're giving you a schooling. Let's face it. You got. Uh, Schneider, Keandre Miller, you know, super young. Fox has been limited to uh, being, uh, you know, maybe above average at best. He's one of the best players in the league, but the Pens have shut him down. The Pens have shut this defense right down impressively. And then, of course, just Sturkin just hasn't been stopping the pucks that he normally would. Can't put it on him. I'd say the whole team, including Shesterkin, are like a deer in the headlights against against Pittsburgh. Um, I'm even kind of I even think Pittsburgh is a little surprised that they're dismantling the Rangers as easily. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh fans. Are you surprised that you know your team is blowing this team out as much as as much as they are? But you got all these veterans: Crosby, Carter, Malkin. Uh, you know. Even Danton Heinen, Boyle, he's been there with Tampa Bay. You know, Rodriguez is young, but, you know, he's been around. This is a very veteran team. And, of course, Crosby, the leader, one of the best leaders that ever played the game, calming everybody down. They don't get too high. They don't get too low. And that's what the Rangers are trying to learn how to do. You got your third-string goaltender in? How about let's not have it in our zone? How about that? That's what they're doing. Uh, and Pittsburgh has a bunch of players that have played together. They know how to react in different situations, how to play in different ways to comp based on what's happening. If you have your third string goaltender in, we're going to play a high pressure neutral zone attack type game and try to outscore our opposition. And they sure as heck did, didn't they? Tell me what you think, Rangers fans. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh fans. Sub up to my YouTube channel. Tell me in the comment section. Let me know what you think of your team right now. Were you surprised that this is the way it turned out or has turned out so far? Do you believe, Rangers fans, that you, you still got a, you know, a decent chance? I mean, 
Wow, it looks pretty bleak to me. Okay, next game. Whoops. Monday, there we go. Avalanche Predators, and uh, this, I'm going to keep this fairly short and sweet. Um, I, I think the main thing now, of course, Predators are out. The Avalanche, this is what I will say about this game, and this is a call out to uh, a lot of the other teams out there that weren't able to put it away. You got the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Colorado Avalanche. Colorado Avalanche could have taken this game a little lately. Ah, oh, we're up 3 nothing. You know, we'll go out there and do the best we can. We know they're going to be playing hard. We don't want to waste too much energy. You know, we can go home and win it. No. No. Foot on the throat. Bye bye. Um, they, they, I mean, Nashville certainly played the best that they could have played in that game. And the Avalanche did struggle with it a little bit and played around with it a little bit and were trying to find their spots. But in the third period, they came out and said, ah, that's enough, enough of this. Enough is enough right now. Uh, you know, Nashville got up 3-2. And if you noticed, like I noticed, when, they, when Nashville got up 3-2, if you looked at the bench and you looked on the ice, nobody looked rattled about it. They, they had their game face on. We're confident. We're an amazing team. We're going to take them out right now. And they just did it. Did it, and Nashville had nothing. They they kind of it's almost like Colorado sometimes it thinks it seems like they're just softening up their opposition to the third. They did it in the regular season a lot too. Just soften them up, soften them up. In the third period, we're going to give everything we got. And when Colorado gives everything they got, there's not too many people, not too many teams that can stop them. This team is absolutely freaking insane. McKinnon. Uh, Confer's having an amazing playoffs. He's coming out of his skin, as I like to call it right now. Nachuskin is one of the best two-way players in the game, most underrated player that way in the league. And then they grab Lekanum, which was a beautiful move. Sturm has fit in perfect on that fourth line. Uh, it's just a wonderful lineup. And then, of course, you got Makar. What a magi magician this guy is. Uh, He's not going to win the Norris this year. And I think that'll be the last time McCarr doesn't win the Norris this year. He is just a beast. I wouldn't doubt that. It, like, I'm, I took Colorado to win the Cup this year. And uh, I, I just, they're too good, man. They're too good all around. It'll be interesting when they get stiffer competition. But uh, that now, of course, leads to the next question. What about Francois? It's one thing. For Francois to, you know, pull out something against Nashville here. But is it going to be their downfall again this year? Goaltending? Kemper hurt? I, yeah, he was known to get hurt before. And now he's hurt again. And uh, as much as I said Colorado, I don't know if any team can win with the goaltender. Like, goaltender. Francois is bad, but, I mean, it's not great. Backup goaltender makes it's going to make it tough. As far as Nashville Predators fans, what I'm asking you out there is where do we go from here? Talk now that maybe they won't sign Forsberg. I don't know. Uh, I I put this over to the boards before, and I got a lot of Poyle fired, Hines fired. What about Barry Trotz back? wonder if Barry Trotz would come back. I have a feeling he's going to go home to Winni Winnipeg. But what a cool story it would be to bring Barry Trotz back. Uh, I'd love to do it. I would back up the truck for that. $10 million a year, Mr. Trotz. Barry, what, what do you say? Just outbid everybody if money is an issue. Uh, but I, I think it's probably, I think this, what happened with Barry Trotz, I think, was that he kind of told, said that, you know what, I wouldn't mind going home. Lamorello's like, okay, well, I'll make it easy for you. I'll just fire you. Then it'll, you know. They are, you don't have a million questions and all that kind of stuff like that. You just, I, I'll take the heat. And everybody's talking to Lamorello right now. He went out and did a press conference, which he doesn't do. And Barry Trotz can kind of just go off into the sunset. And uh, so everybody thinks Lamorello is a bad guy. I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's as bad as everybody thinks he is. 
Uh, but this team needs an overhaul. There is so many way directions that they could go. Um, I have a feeling that I, I, I don't know. Tell me, Nashville fans. I think the only way to do this is to totally tear it down. But you would have thought you would have traded Forsberg if that was the case. Now it's possible you could trade for Forsberg, trade Forsberg to a team for his rights, so they can give him an eight-year deal. But that's only going to garner you a second-round pick, and I think that's likely what will happen. They kept Forsberg, hoping you know to make that money. Uh, oh, by the way, Nashville fans, you didn't fill the building the last two games. That's, I hear that it was 5,000 less than capacity the last two games. What is that all about? Tell me that in the comment section, Nashville fans. Sub up to my channel, YouTube channel, both, color, both Colorado fans and Nashville fans. And Nashville fans, tell me what you think. What Colorado fans, what do you think? Can you do it with Francois? Francois, is that how you say it? Can you do it with them? Um... It's just so unfortunate that you lost him there. And Connor Ingram, I hope you get a contract next year. You played as well as a young goaltender, 25-year-old goaltender could play. I think somebody, I think he, I think he earned himself a contract next year. All right, let's go to the last game, I think it is now. And we will be. Yeah. Flames versus the Stars. And this is the Flames that we were all looking for. Dominating in the offensive zone. Uh, maybe some nerds against Dallas. I mean, Dallas threw them for a little bit of a loop. They play a, they play a sneaky defensive game, but 54 shots on goal. Woo! There's a good way to break Ottinger. Hey. <laughs> I don't care who you are. You're just trying to stop 54 shots. You're not going to win too many games allowing 54 shots on goal. And a lot of those shots were good shots. Audi has definitely, Ottinger has definitely, I would say, made himself out to, showed himself to be one of the better goaltenders in the league right now. I've been talking about him for a long time. I talked about him my last one. Um, Kachuk, look at this. Two little penalty minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Kachuk. Like, it's not time to go to war here right now. Um, he put it, he, he started focusing. He got, got himself an assist. Uh, getting, Goudreau getting a goal was huge. Oh, yeah, that's right. He got the, he got the uh, breakaway, or uh, not breakaway, but you know what I'm talking about. See, I do this right on the fly. <laughs> Penalty shot. I can't think of penalty shot. I do these right on the fly. Um, got the penalty shot goal. Uh, hopefully that breaks them out. I, I gotta, I gotta say. I mean, I'm an Oilers fan, but I like this Calgary team. I like Nanjo Pani. I like Blake Coleman. I love Matthew Kachuk and Lucic. Okay, we lost the deal, man. We lost the deal. He's not great. He's overpaid, but he's better than what we got. Yeah. So. They're playing. That was a fantastic game, and I think Calgary probably keeps it rolling here. Um, well, they had seven defensemen last night. That's a good move. I didn't. I didn't even notice that last night. Honestly, they went with seven defensemen. I think that's mostly because uh, Shillington's been having a little bit of a difficult time in the playoffs. And uh, he wanted to limit his minutes a little bit, so they put a guy like Stone out there who's just going to blast it. Eight shots. Eight shots on that. Just go out there and use your shot. Shoot, 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 shoot. He listens. He does it. Stone is limited physically. He's limited talent-wise. But he will do what he's told. And he sure did what he was told there. It was an impressive win. Dallas, now back on your heels, going over to Calgary. And uh, you... Still not getting the best from guy from Sagan, Sagan, as far as I can tell. What do you guys think, Dallas fans and Calgary fans? Are you taking a sigh of like kind of a sigh of relief right now that Calgary came out and played that way because um, that's the way they got to play to win this? But you shut them down, you shut Dallas down, and and they played a, a game that I. Saw them playing all year in the regular season. They found a way against Dallas, who they've had a difficult time with. Um, Jamie Ben one shot on goal. 
you know, penalty minutes, good. You want to take penalty minutes, that's a good idea. Go on, allow, allow Calgary to go on the power play all day. Uh, Sagan, two shots on goal. This is what you're going to get from your eight, nine, whatever million dollar players that you got on there. Uh, you know, you, you, Robertson's a beast like always, but for the most part, the team is just completely shut down. They didn't have an answer for what Calgary was giving them. And uh, is that going to continue back in Calgary? The pushback is where we're going to have to see now. I mean, I'm afraid, Dallas. Tell me what you think. I'm a little scared. A little scared that we let the that uh, you let the uh, lion out last night. And uh, do you have does Dallas have the lion in him? Uh, Ottinger. Can you keep on relying on Ottinger like that? No. So they're going to have to change it up. Tell me what you think, Dallas fans. Can you come back here? Do you feel confident in your team right now? Um, I, I know some really good hockey minds that had, you win, had Dallas winning this game last night. I wasn't one of them. I thought they were going to figure it out. I got a lot of faith in Sutter, and I love this team. All right, guys. Tell me in the comment section what you thought about what I said. Sub up to my YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section. Let's have some conversation about this. And uh, that's my full 42. I'm going to be doing this all the time. So have a great day, everybody. Oh, wait. You want to see me? Let me wave. Okay, bye.